Hey everybody, you just got stuck at a four-way stop. I'm Brock with No K, and I'm here with my co-host Chase. How are we doing today, Chase? Hey Brock, I'm excited about the stories today. Especially excited about the first story that we're going to kick off this episode with. I'm going to tease it a little bit. We've got a writer whose husband is friends with a celebrity restaurateur in Chicago. You've definitely heard of him. Definitely heard of him. I've worked for one of his restaurants, but we'll get into that later. We've also got special guest Tyler Young, a comedian and podcast host of the podcast Hi and Hello. We will check that out later in the Turn On Your Headlights special. What do you think? Should we just get to the stories? Let's get right into it. If you want to go and take a ride with me with three women all crammed in the back seat, oh why do I live this away? Hey, must be the fun day. But if you want to take a free ride with me, make me laugh from the back of my Camry, oh why do I live this away? Hey, must be the fun day. You just got stuck at a four way stop. So, we've got a poop story. So, here's my poop story. I think it's kind of funny. I was on a date with my husband, Okay. but we weren't married yet. So this was like maybe our third date ever out. And he invites me over to his friend's Jimmy John. I don't know if you've ever heard of Jimmy John Leotoad, like Subs. Jimmy John Subs. Yeah. So that was one of his best friends. And, and we've remained friends, good friends with them ever since. Well, anyhow. I once worked for Jimmy John's. So. You did. God <laughs> love Jimmy John like speedy fast. Wow, that was fast. Wait, no, we always say. I don't. Jimmy John's. Freaky fast delivery. Freaky fast. Freaky fast. Jimmy John's. Freaky fast delivery. We watched Jimmy John's drivers run stop signs, speed, and park illegally just to deliver a sandwich. Freaky fast. Freaky fast. Yeah. yeah. I had a freaky fast poo at his house once. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Wait, listen, okay. All right, break so it down, break I it down. I said, okay, so we're going to go to Jimmy John's house for dinner, and I'm going to meet all of my husbands. My, the, we're dating boyfriend. at the time. We're not married. Boyfriend. My boyfriend's friends, and they're going to have a beautiful dinner party. And we, we were in Chicago. It was his brownstone in Chicago. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I said, fine, I'll go. It'll be a lovely night. So I go, and Jimmy John's making like this pasta with like this truffle mushroom stuff, and the table's set beautifully, and we're all having cocktails, and everything was great. And I'm thinking, oh, nice, talking to everyone, introduced to him, blah, blah, blah. Well, all of a sudden, I had this urge, and I'm like, shit, I got to poop. But I'm like, I never poop out like I mean I'm like there's no way I could hold it until I get to go home right and this is before the dinner okay but this was a huge urge and I'm so like you didn't eat the chocolate pasta yet? no we haven't even eaten yet and I'm like fuck I gotta go you're gonna put you're not gonna load more food yeah I'm like no that. we haven't even eaten yeah. I just had this I don't know what it whatever so I'm like all right so I he had a basement and his basement was beautiful he had this white wool carpeting like um wow. like freaking probably expensive you know he was a hunter so he had all these deer everything it's gorgeous yeah so i'm like i'm just gonna sneak down there and do my business and then i'll come back up so i go down there blah blah blah, blah. all of a sudden i flush the toilet and the toilet overflows and I'm like, oh, my God, like, I can't stop the toilet from overflowing. And everything that I've done in the toilet is coming out. And the water is not stopping. And I can't I stop it. <laughs> Kevin, my ex-husband, is upstairs with Jimmy Tan. They're having, and this is only, like, our third date. So in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, now everything is starting a flood on the floor and going into this, like, beautiful wool carpet and I'm like oh my god I can't stop anything I don't know how to turn this off I have a huge poop floating on the floor I mean it's all over the bathroom did it make oh it to the god. white carpet yeah it was so bad and I'm like oh my god you know what no I in my head I go fuck this I am just gonna leave I don't even have to date this guy anymore I'm gonna sneak out the back door and I'll never see these people again but no I go walking up the stairs and Kevin's there and he's like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, there's a little problem downstairs. He's like, oh no, it's okay. I'm like, 
Uh, no, there, uh, there is a little bit of a problem. Like, I, the toilet won't stop overflowing. And he's like, oh, no, it's okay. I'm like, no, really, the toilet's overflowing. So he's like, okay. So he decides to go downstairs to check out the story. He's like, looks at it, and he's like, holy fucking shit. Like, first of all, <laughs> how'd that come out of you, probably? He doesn't even know me. Like, how the hell? This whole thing's a mess. So he rolls up his pants takes off his shoes and his socks and starts cleaning the whole mess up then i'm upstairs like freaking out having anxiety sweating so embarrassed he shouts up to the stairs to jimmy john like hey you know the toilet's clogged down here jimmy john throws him paper towels they turn off the water anyhow to make a long story short he had to clean that all up i was mortified I ended up staying. She ended up marrying him and having two kids. I did. I ended up marrying him and having two kids. But we ended. I ended up having to stay. He cleaned everything up. Jimmy John didn't say anything. I know those two are looking at each other like, who the hell is this chick you brought over here? And then we had to sit and have like a beautiful sit-down dinner. Nice. And with everyone. With what a nice story. With, 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 with an, an empty story. stomach. Exactly. Well, no, then I ate. Well, then you filled it back up. Then she filled it back up. All right, we got Keith in the back seat. Keith, you said you had a funny dad story you wanted to tell us about? I have a lot of dad stories okay. to talk about. Drop them on, drop them on us. Let's see what he, you got. He's he's a great guy, by good. the way. I just want to preface with that. He's a good dude. Awesome. Um, really smart. Hard working, but doesn't know how to have fun, <laughs> or at least not the same way that I do. Okay. So, for example, one of the things, so he has he has his place in Maine, right? Okay. So I'm from Boston. Beautiful, probably... beautiful, beautiful state, beautiful area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From born and raised in Massachusetts. And we got this place in the woods in Maine. It's really nice. It's quiet. It's like his zen, you know, where he goes to just chill. and. Right. Uh, you know, when I go, I, I invite friends and we get loud. You get which is get you know, wasted, which is kind of yeah. not his mo. Okay. <laughs> so one night, I had these like huge speakers and the kind of speakers where you go to two and it's too loud, two out of ten, you know. Yeah. So we are doing karaoke. Okay. In the garage. Awesome. What are you singing? Oh man, everything. What's your go-to? Like emo shit. Like, okay. Like taking back Sunday or like. I don't know. Who knows? Like, I think my Blink buddy's 182. wife, Blink One Eighty Two. My buddy's wife was doing like Fall Out Boy. I think. Nice, like, nice. All that kinds of crap. And you know, we're like jamming. We're we're singing. We're loud. We're drinking. We're doing other stuff. I don't know if I can say it on this sure, podcast. Sure, yeah, whatever. If, it's, if, it's, if you <laughs> want to have a good night, you can. yeah, you're it's, having fun. It's it's early in the morning. You know, it's a good time. Uh, it was you know after midnight anyway, and the lights go out. And I'm like shit. What, the power went out. Like everything's out. Everything's out. Power's out. <laughs> We're like, well, that's weird. You know, I guess maybe we just like blew a fuse because we had like the speakers going, right. and all this stuff. And then like, you know, maybe like five, ten minutes go by, and we're like, it comes back on. We're like, oh, sweet, party on. So we go back to singing, go sing some more. Happens again, maybe like twenty minutes later. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is like a really bad problem with the power. I guess <laughs> like I have no idea. This is so weird. How often do you go up? To this cabin up in Maine pretty frequently but okay. I don't always have like all my friends up so yeah so you know we're we're getting louder than normal and yeah so eventually my dad <laughs> my dad comes out it's probably like three or four in the morning at this okay. point and he's like what the fuck <laughs> he's so mad why don't y'all just go to bed or go home <laughs> He's, he's getting so pissed off, red in the face. I was like, "Holy shit, what just happened?" You're like, uh, "I guess uh, it's time to go, guys." <laughs> I guess, I guess we'll quiet down, you know. Right. <laughs> I guess we'll quiet down, and then you know, it did, you know, stupid me, it didn't occur to me till the next day. We're like having breakfast, like, "Hey, you know, sorry, we're we were you know making noise and whatever." And he's like, "Why didn't you understand that I was like turning the power off?" <laughs> I was like, oh, that was you? <laughs> you just flipping the, the, the fuse box. He was turning it off to try to give us a message like, go to fucking bed. <laughs> you like, no idea. You're just thinking, oh, oh the power went the, out. The lights are going. <laughs> something's wrong with the lights. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. So that's my dad. That's my dad's story. That's awesome. What are you doing out here today? What are you doing in Chicago? I have a long history with Chicago. Okay. So, again, I'm from Massachusetts, but originally I came out here because of work. So I work in software, tech, with sales, and you know, you you try to you know 
get in front of people, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, before, you know, pre-COVID, that was a thing to do. That was cool. I was getting out here a little bit. Met someone at Riot Fest. You know what Riot Fest is? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, Follow up boy, and, she ru- and she ruined my life. Yep. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was great. She's a great person. I wish the best of her. Girl at the Rock Show. Girl at the Rock Show. <laughs> met her. We kind of dated long distance for a little bit. And then eventually my company was like, oh, if you want to move out there, you can. I was like, oh, sure, great. So I move out here. And I move into her one bedroom condo and I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. You know, we're gonna get a cat and it's, it's gonna be like, you know, living easy, whatever. And you know, COVID happened, right? So, right. you know, living in a one bedroom condo is like, oh, well, all right, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so there was that. There was a little. I got divorced during COVID, so I'm, <sighs> I'm fully aware of close spaces yeah. <laughs> not working out. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to bring the mood. I mean, down it basically a was a divorce. I mean, in <laughs> right, a lot of ways. Right. Yeah, no. She got the cat. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was Scar Joe, Scarlett Johansson. She was a great cat. I taught her how to play fetch. She was awesome. She was. <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the right cat with the right personality. She was awesome. Awesome. She, yeah. yeah dog, we, dog personality, but yeah, cat body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had these little like mice that we throw, and she fucking brings it back. Nice. Like, she was great. Now she's probably just terrorizing my ex, which is great. You know, I, hope, I hope so. Yeah. yeah, I hope she's just like causing, yeah, wreaking Chaos, havoc. Just yeah, exactly. Shredding all her clothes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, I have a lot of history here. But you know what? I elected to stay out here for another year, about even after her and I broke up. Okay. And uh, you know what? That's when I started playing music. So nice. So I've been doing open mics for over a year, and now I gig. So it's awesome. Uh, it's been pretty cool. Is there anywhere we can find you and check out what you got going on? I have an Instagram. I have my my music Instagram is KP. You know, like Kim Possible, like KP, the initials. Yep, Kim Possible, yeah. Good yeah, job. yeah, yeah. But just KP, the heartbreaker. Okay. Yeah. Man. KP, the heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah, you know, like... Perfect. You know, like Tom Petty and the heartbreakers. Well, oh, this is just KP, just, the heartbreaker. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Just breaking hearts. Breaking hearts. Well, well, actually, according to my friend, though, I'm, I'm making hearts, because his girl brought her to my show, my first gig I ever did. Okay. And they've been together for a bit, and they, they seem pretty fucking happy. So, nice, know, nice. You know, there maybe, we go. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm making hearts, too. Well, I'm glad that you're giving happiness to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser and not all the above. Yes, there yes, you go. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I try to just spread joy and all, all over the place. That's what, that's what we're trying to do with the podcast. Like, yeah. if, if this can take somebody's mind off of the shit that's going on in their life, like, awesome. I did my part. <laughs> Go check out Keith on Instagram, KP the Heartbreaker. So, Chase, did you know that I worked for Jimmy John's I back in the day? I had no idea you worked for so this was, where, this was probably Where did a, you work for Jimmy John's? So this was probably, let's see, this was 2009. It was when I was living out in Colorado. Oh. Uh, shout out to... Shout out to Smoky Hill Jimmy John's. So, such a fun job was delivering. I was one of those freaky fast guys. Always have been. Awesome. Always will be. <laughs> the um, ladies will attest to that. <laughs> one of the managers was brothers with the owner, which I became really, really good friends with the manager. And his older brother was the boss. He invited a bunch of us over for a pool party, and we were there past like when it was closed. The cops ended up showing up. The cops were just like, get out of the pool, go home, and everything's fine. Yeah. And for whatever reason, my boss would not get out of the pool. Like, the cops had their tasers drawn on him oh, while he no. was in the pool. I like it. it <laughs> that can't be it, tell safe. Me if I'm, that can't tell be me safe. if I'm wrong, but is that instant death or not? Electricity and water. Not, not supposed, good. Not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was hammered. <laughs> and... Like I don't, I don't remember whatever even ended up happening. If he got put in jail or if they just let him go, I, I yeah. Oof. Anyways, what the story that I was actually trying to tell was okay. how, how I how I left, <laughs> like how I quit. So I had just finished school out there. I knew that I was going to be moving to the Chicago area. Okay, like I don't really care if I make it to work tomorrow. It was my last day that I knew about, but I had never even given a notice. I was. Yeah. Just kind of being a jerk about it because yeah. I didn't like my boss. The outcome of that was one of the most amazing things. And I wish I still had my old phone that had this message saved on there 
because the owner called me and just left me this message of like, <laughs> so just want to let you know that I think you're a real piece of shit. And <laughs> like, if you keep living your life like this, blah, 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 like shit's not going to go well for you. And I was just like, <laughs> and now you're I, a I, podcast I, host. I, <laughs> so I would, clearly I would, he was right. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm dr- I drive rideshare and fail at comedy, and now I have a, po- a shitty podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, That's what awesome. now? What's up, man? That's awesome. So, speaking of fast food, our next story involves a fast food scam at an unnamed burger joint. We are not going to name the burger restaurant because we want to protect the innocent, but it's pretty wild, and. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. So, I don't even know how to start this story off. <laughs> so, the, the, what, we got a, you said a work story? Yeah, it's definitely okay. a work story. So, I work at a, um, I work at a... Okay. We're going to say, I work at a burger joint. For sure. Let's go with that, just in case. <laughs> for sure, for um trademark purposes. Right, right. <laughs> so, I work at this burger place. You know, it's pretty popular. Everyone comes in all the time. But the company is not as, um, it's not as nice as they present themselves to be, so. Ooh, that's not good, okay. <laughs> it's not good at all. Let's, let's, hear, let's hear the dirt. What, so what's... I have, um, I get a random call one day, and they're like, who do you have speaking on the phone? And we're like, um, who is this? He's like, I'm the area manager, and I'm very unpleased with my service right now. I need to speak to the manager right now. It's like, okay, <laughs> I'm the manager. How can I help you? He's like, you're, there's no way you're a manager. You're a female. There's no way you're Ooh. a manager. I need to speak to a manager. So I said, okay, I'm going to give a male manager for you. So I put the male manager on the phone. He's like, I'm the area manager. I'm upset. Everyone has to clock out right now, and I'm going to close the store. And we were looking at each other like, who is this guy? <laughs> so we hang up the phone. We play phone tag for about 40 minutes. So now it gets to the point where he's making really crazy threats. Like, these threats are, like, so crazy. We have no choice but to entertain him. He's like, I'm going to come up there right now. I'm going to shut the entire store down. You're not going to have a job by tomorrow. So we're just all looking at each other like, who is this guy? Is this really an area manager? Right. So he finally... Sounds like he's on a power trip. For real. (laughs) So I I ended up calling around, made a few calls. I'm like, hey, do you know who this guy is? He, He says he's an area manager. I don't know anything about this. They tell me that they have a guy who's been scamming them for about 10 days saying he's an area manager and we have to give him the entire money at the same. (laughs) So, and around like 4 o'clock-ish, we get a weird call. He's like, yeah, I'm the area manager. I need you to give me the money at the safe because I have some stores that need some money. And we were like, "Um, okay, yeah, sure. Guess come pick up the money. We'll give it to you. So I immediately call. Like, He's here. He's going to come and pick up the money. We got him. We got him. I hope him. you called the cops. Yeah, it was just like the most craziest <laughs> transaction ever. So he gets there. I have the cops in the back waiting on him. I have my big bosses waiting on him, too, so we can see who this guy is. Right. We finally see who the guy is. He's been working for the company almost 20-something years, and he's upset about $100. Someone had to pay him $100, and he didn't get his $100, so his thing was he was going to get his $100 one way or another. So he decided to call every um, burger in the district, every burger joint in the district that he knows, and whoever name he knows, and he's using their name like, yeah, my name is Mike. Give give me the money at the (laughs) safe. So he gets there, the cops get there. He's like, yeah, I'm here for the money you guys say you're going to give. I said, oh, yeah, it's in the back. Come with me. And then he comes in there. The cops arrest him. He's just looking like, you set me up. You set me up. Like, I'm like, yeah. well, what were you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> like, you expect to get the money? He's like, I did it to four other stores. And the police like, oh, yeah? <laughs> Keep talking, buddy. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, now we know. <laughs> and it was just like so surreal. Like I've never been through a situation like that. I only see stuff like that happen on like TV shows right, or movies. Right. I mean, I'm assuming he got fired and arrested and For sure. all of the above. All of the above. Uh, oh, that's fun. So it's like when people ask, they what happened. I have to start the story over <laughs> from the beginning, and people never believe. They said so. He was just calling and calling. He called us for like. Six hours straight, <laughs> like That's a, yeah, like repetitive. So like he never missed a minute. Like it got so bad to the point where we had to t- unhook our phones, and when we hooked our phones back up, 
He's like, did you guys miss me? <laughs> oh my God, what a psycho. <laughs> yeah, a real psycho. But then we later on found out that he, do, he does have a mental issue that no one knew about. So. I mean, we all have a mental issue, don't we? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, that's not pretty much an excuse to threaten a whole store right, <laughs> over right. $100. Yeah. And the big question that remains to this day is, did he ever get the $100? No, obviously not. <laughs> like, there, there, there's no way. There's no way. And it's just so surreal because when I speak to the story to people, they will not believe it happened the way it happened. Like, it's like literally a TV episode. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, like shenanigans after shenanigans after shenanigans. And then even now, he has his friends calling on his behalf. And doing the same thing. Yeah, they play music all day long. Like today, <laughs> I guess they wanted to have a Beyonce playlist day, so all day. So they're just calling, making prank calls now. Yeah, and, yeah. And playing music over the phone all Fun. day. I mean, I mean, as long as it's good music. But who has the time? <laughs> today I was kind of excited because they had the Beyonce playing, but yeah, it was just right. like, come on, guys. He he's already in jail. You you, you can't help him. <laughs> Like, what more can we do to make this situation more worse than it I, already is? How old How old was the guy? He was about 40. He okay. In his early 40s, I believe. That's crazy. And he was working for the company for like 20 plus years. And I guess something went wrong with the $100. And, <laughs> and he, Didn't he, get his $100. Yeah, he wanted his 100 back. It was like, I need my $100. So is that what he was saying when he came into the store to get the money? Is that we found out about the hundred dollars because when he tried to do it at another store, someone figured out who he was, and they was like, "Hey, aren't you?" I mean, <laughs> if you're smart, you go for a little bit more. For sure, like a hundred dollars is is not a lot of money. I mean, it's not. I, I mean, it, to some people, it is. But and if in, you realize how many stores he's called asking for this hundred dollars, it's right. like. Dude, <laughs> you got to let it go. This is the part of the show where, we, you know, we want to talk to you guys about some stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is the part of the show where we shill. This is the part of the show where we ask you to chill, support yeah. the show. So if you like yes. the show and you want to support the show, please find us on the Internet and follow us. Leave us a review. Leave us a five-star rating on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever the hell it's called these days. Come follow us on Instagram. That's I, I feel like that's our biggest one that we're dropping dropping segments and stuff like that. Yeah. At the number four Way Stop Podcast. You can follow me at Brock with no K. That's B R O C W A. No, I mean, we don't need to spell that out. You figure it out. <laughs> it's Brock with no K. And we also have a YouTube where we're posting clips from the podcast, full podcast episodes, and also stories clipped out of the episodes. So you can just catch a story. Maybe you want to go back and listen to one instead yeah. of the entire podcast. Put all that up there for you to check out. That's all we want to do for shilling. So yesterday I had kind of a cool thing happen. I had a lady get in and threw her the pitch of the podcast and she scanned the QR and she's like, oh, one of my ex coworkers actually follows you already. And I was like, there's a chance that he might have already told us a story on the podcast. He's definitely been a writer with me before, but like, check it out. Maybe he has a story on the podcast and tell all your other old coworkers to check it out too, because he might have told a story and, you know, check him out. That's right. We're growing and you love to see it. You know what you should do, though? You what? should share this. If, if, if you do enjoy what we're doing, tell somebody about it. Yeah, if you could just share this with one person, share it with your... Tell, tell a coworker. Share it with your coworker, share it with your best friend, share it with your mom. That's we fun. love moms. We want more moms in our community. Let's get into the next story. All right, let's hit the club down in Houston with... Gia. Let's hit the club with Gia down in Houston. <laughs> We've got Gia in the back seat, and you said you had a fun blackout story? Yes, this All right. is the funniest blackout story you guys will ever probably hear. <laughs> All right, okay, so this was my first time in Houston, right? Okay. It was my cousin. We went out with my cousin and all her friends. I tagged along on the trip or whatever because so we were going to a lot of clubs and stuff like that so we went to this one club that this guy invited me to okay. invited me and my friends to so we did, did you know him or? no we okay. didn't know him he was just like a promoter he was saying like oh come to my club tonight oh, gotcha. so i'm telling my friends like come on let's go to this club i know it's gonna be lit we're in houston it's lit 
so we get to the club right and i'm like it's a lot of it it was a lot of people anyways but i'm like it's a lot of people here and it's a lot of i can tell a lot of like famous people like i see people with like big chains on big watches okay. you know so i'm I, I can tell they have money yeah cool so we or get they, in, they're acting like they have money. yeah acting like they have money you know because you know it's always a front <laughs> so we get in there and it's like people throwing money all over the place throwing just throwing it up in the air throwing it up in the air you know were you in a rap video no <laughs> it felt like a rap video though so they're just throwing money everywhere throwing money everywhere people that were in the middle because we were waiting to get a section so we're standing in the middle so for all the people standing in the middle they're picking the money up because why would I mean. you exactly that's why would you would not pick some money up that someone's throwing in the air <laughs> right so by that time like i said we didn't came from another club i'm drunk to where i'm just not even thinking like i'm just standing there like okay when are we going to go sit down because i'm about to pass out i'm about to fall out yeah so i'm seeing money fall on me i smoke weed so i'm like okay let me get like five dollars so i could um buy me some like roll-ups or whatever yeah. and this girl walks up and everybody's picking money off the floor she chooses me she's a bottle girl so she chooses me to say hey all the money whatever money that's on the floor is for me it's for the bottle girl so i'm from chicago when you throw money in the air anywhere you would think that it's for you to pick up if not for the bottle the floor, girls and money's hitting the floor in front of me i'm probably gonna pick it up exactly so she picks on me to say hey you're not supposed to pick this money up and tr proceeds to reach in my purse Ooh. and tries to take the money out of my purse. Mind you, I had like at least a thousand dollars in my purse. Why, why are you walking around with that much cash? Be well, because I got <laughs> a little bit of money. And because to get into all the places, you had to have cash. We were going oh, to a lot okay. of places. So sure, I said, sure. I don't want to have to keep putting my card into any machine. Let me just get a decent amount of money off to pay for, um, you know, my right. parking and all of that. So. I, so when she reached in my purse, I'm worried about my thousand dollars going on the floor. I'm not worried about this five fucking dollars that I didn't pick up off the floor, bitch. Right. I don't need this money. So she proceeds to like go in my purse. So I'm drunk. My first thing, all I do, I just swing off her. I just remember <laughs> just swinging off her. And so like one thing leads to another, and we kind of start fighting. So her friends, I guess, were in the club too. And they kind of start fighting my friends. So now at this point, we're all like tussling. So it's like rappers on stage and stuff yelling like, get her broke ass out of here and get out the club. So I'm getting carried out the club by the security. I get out the club. They like throw me out. I don't remember any. I lose my phone. Luckily, I still have my thousand dollars. I'm so drunk. I don't know what happened. All my friends come out too. I'm like, did we just get into a fight? Wait, what just happened? Like, I'm so like, lost. Like, yeah, you just threw on that lady. Yeah. <laughs> like i'm so lost they're like you don't remember what happened i'm like how do we get out the club i thought we were going to send into a section so i'm so confused the girl has so i told you like i lost my phone the girl has my phone so i have two phones so i'm calling my other phone like who has my phone like i'm drunk at the point yeah. like, who has my phone where's my phone we've all been there the girl's like, I have your phone. The same girl you just beat up in the club. I said, oh, bitch, I'm coming back for my phone. So I'm like knocking on the door <laughs> trying to get back in the thing. Like, give me my phone. So I guess the promoter comes out. He's like, hey, I invited you to this club. You came and showed your ass. I said, no, this girl went in my purse and tried to take take that $5 that you guys are throwing. Like, why would you guys be throwing money? And then out of everybody, she comes to pick on me. So at that point, I'm so drunk, I just like fell to the ground. My friend's like, just give her her phone. We have to go. It's too much going on let's next day yeah let's just get out of here yeah, yeah. next day i wake up i don't remember anything i don't <laughs> my friends tell me this story so much now that i'm piecing it together and i understand it i didn't remember that story maybe until a month later it's a good it was a <laughs> good what happens in houston stays in houston uh -huh. if you go to houston baby you're gonna be lit <laughs> and don't pick up any of the money that they throw in the air because i guess that's for the bottle that's girls. for the bottle girls it's not don't, for us yep yep or now we know. But if a bitch goes in your purse, <laughs> knock her ass out. Yeah, I agree with that. Because you don't do that. Like, and that's all I was uh, trying to get. Like, did she think her. you were, did she think you were stuffing money in your purse as well? I think so. But my thing is, like I said, we're in the middle and it was so many people. So out of everybody you came yeah. to, why was it me? And even if people would have said, hey, this money is for us. Yeah. You don't reach in nobody's purse because if I was to reach in your purse, you would right, feel right. upset or, you know, feel some type of way. So it was just the way that she went about it. And like I said, I was truly blacked out drunk. So it was like it was no trying to 
reason was me at that moment. Sure. I just seen red, and I was ready to punch her. Like, <laughs> and, that's exactly and that's what happened. And I pulled a wig off. <laughs> she was so pretty. So my friend's like, why are you a fighter? You would say, you're so pretty, bitch. Like, why the fuck? And she was so, I do remember her being very beautiful. She was very beautiful. And uh, she didn't look beautiful. Well, but but she, she, yeah, she went in your purse and learned the hard way. She awesome. was still pretty, though. Maybe she ever hears your podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry for, for hitting her in the yeah, face. Yeah, I didn't mean to beat her. We got, a, we got an apology. Yeah. Do we, do we, we don't have a name, do we? I don't know her name, but I do apologize. <laughs> I Gia is apologizing for <laughs> knocking you the fuck out. <laughs> Just don't do that shit again, bitch. <laughs> and it's crazy because I go to Houston all the time and I look for that same bottle girl. Yeah, that's funny. For the same girl because if I ever see I, you I, again. Yeah, what are you going to do? Are you going to apologize? or? I'll apologize <laughs> and if she talks crazy, I'm going to knock her ass out again. <laughs> Maybe that. just avoid her. Yeah, I'll just avoid her. I'll avoid her. I know she learned her lesson after that, though. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't reach in purses. Don't do that. That's so rude. And it was crazy because, like, when they're when the people were screaming, like, get, get her ass out of here. All I feel is someone throwing a cup at my head. Someone threw a cup at my head from on stage. I was, like, so embarrassed. I've never been, like, put out of a club, like, that big. Like, the club was huge. It was so many people in there. It was, like, rappers, all type of stuff. So I'm just looking so embarrassed. I was so beautiful that day. Nice heels, nice outfit. And all you see is me throwing over two security guards' shoulders, getting put out, throwing yeah. out the club, <laughs> embarrassed. I paid $100 to get in. Oh, man. Barely was in there for more than 40 minutes. I was out the club. We got Claire and Michelle in the back seat. Claire, you said you had a story about a, what was a, di a diva cup. Diva cup. Diva okay. cup, which I've actually realized is like it's just a brand of menstrual cup. Okay. Um, Not super familiar with it, but yeah, it is. It is a a small rubber tulip shaped receptacle with a stem on the end, and it catches menstrual blood instead of it's an alternative to tampons and pads. Okay. And I have always wanted to use one, and I decided I would try and use one when I did my study abroad in London because I was going to be doing a lot of traveling, and I thought, well, I don't want to be lugging tampons around. Right. So I had my Diva Cup. Didn't try to practice it before I left the country. I was like, oh, I'll figure it out. Figure it out on Figure the road. it out in Europe. That's, <laughs> that's the European way. Right. And so then, you know, I got my period, and I was like, all right, here we go. And didn't read the instructions uh, for the Diva Cup because I didn't think they're really... I was like, I figured this out. I am, I'm a lady. I'm a lady. I'm a, <laughs> I know how this works by now. <laughs> so then I folded it up in just kind of any old way that I wanted to. And I um, put it into my vagina. And it's sort of like <laughs> this metaphor that I'm going to tell really doesn't hate me in a very feminine light but you know like when you give a dog a treat and you're holding the treat in between your two fingers and the dog just kind of mouths that treat and just like <laughs> like it felt like the diva cup disappeared into my body way way farther than I ever thought possible oh, no. <laughs> I was like well <laughs> so I was like so I'm like well I, I can't feel it so I went 24 hours with this diva cup okay. in, in me and I'm like yeah. This probably isn't good. <laughs> so I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, so I the program that I was doing, they assigned us a doctor, but he was a pediatrician. And so <laughs> I went to this very, very polite British pediatrician, and I was like, hey. <laughs> I had to tell him what a diva cup was. I was yeah, like, this is that the first I've ever heard of it. <laughs> this, I, have a, I have a diva cup stuck in my vagina. And he was like, wow, okay. Thankfully, he had, he had forceps. So... <laughs> So I like, uh, yeah, laid back. You know, the, you know, ladies, you get put your yep. feet, put your feet in the stirrups. Yep. Um, do the whole, the whole thing. Took the forceps, and it was like, <laughs> oh, this is this is the part of the story that's kind of gross. It was like uncorking like a bottle of red wine, and it was just <laughs> like oh, no. he just like he had to go, he had to go way in there, and just kind of yank it out. If I had read the instructions, I would have known that with a diva cup works through suction and when you put it in you're supposed to control when it 
unfolds inside you so that it suctions to a to a certain point okay. and I had not I just kind of like put it up as far as I could Sucked and so then it, it just kind of like sucks like a little octopus right to where it was probably like right next to my cervix or something <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah so he yanked it out there was a lot of blood <laughs> and like you said uncorking a bottle uncorking of red a bottle of red wine and then um, we both kind of just looked at each other and we're like we just went through something together <laughs> Um, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was like, I was like, thank you so much. And then I was too embarrassed to ask for the diva cut back uh, because I'm sure he didn't want to see me again with the same problem. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I've used tampons ever since. I <laughs> didn't um, go back. I didn't go back. No. I, you know, one day I hope. We want to thank our listeners for telling their stories this week, and to all our. Are we going to skip the fact that we just learned about this diva cup that I never <laughs> knew? I'm fully aware of a diva cup, and it is not new to me at all. <laughs> I'm a, I'm oblivious. I, you know, whatever. I need to get out more. Apparently, yeah. All right, it's time to get away from the rider stories and turn on the headlights. We've got our very special guest coming up next, Tyler Young. We did try to record with Tyler a couple weeks ago after Dale's album release party, so we recorded with Mac on a transition in between bars so as as you notice he was a little intoxicated we are going to have him back when when he's sober we've talked about it but then i also recorded with mac and tyler at the end of the night i was giving them both a ride home and it was a drunken mess it was the end of the party everybody was exhausted so i did invite tyler back on to record with no distractions and a clear head so let's go check it out (laughs) All right, guys, it's time once again to turn on your headlights. We've got Tyler Young in the back seat. Tyler? What's up? How are we doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Or should I say hi? Hi and hello. If hi like. and hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tyler here has a podcast, a uh, comedy podcast, and it's definitely for those that like to partake in the herbal essences. Essence, essence, essence I can't even say essences. You're good. You're essences. Good. Yeah, adult of use, life. <laughs> a, adult use uh, it, recreational it, it, it. cannabis is is always welcomed if you'd like to kind of sit around the campfire with us while we talk for an hour or so. But it's it's not necessary. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's that's the undertone of it. But yeah, yeah. So, Thank uh, you for mentioning it. Yeah, absolutely. How long have you been involved in comedy? Involved in comedy. Back in uh, 2012, uh, moved to the city, and I did improv originally. Okay. So I got to study at um, IO and Comedy Sports, and that was awesome. I got to be around a lot of fun people. Nice. Um, but then I saw kind of like what it really took to, to you know, be on a team, and I don't know, I did it didn't seem like the right path at the time. So okay. I did that for about three years, maybe four years, took some time off and uh, worked with a few buddies uh, making like independent films and stuff. It was okay. kind of neat. Fell into a fun little uh, tribe of filmmakers. Uh, can you, I, I don't know if you can say tribe. I'll, 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 I'll run that back. <laughs> I ran into uh, a fun little gang of kids. Like we had I'm, a great I'm time. I'm 167th, so we're Are allowed. You? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> did you take one of those tests? Did you no, ever take I, an ancestry I never test? Have. I never have. I haven't either. I, I know it's mostly German and Irish and then probably some other stuff. I had a crazy right wing uncle of mine make some real sense the other day when he was like, you notice how you never see ads anymore for, for those ancestry tests? Is it maybe because everyone just got a Q-tip up the nose? And I was like, <laughs> hey, you're, you're onto something there, man. You're goofy on everything else, but you, you got a point. <laughs> So so yeah, um, did I was doing improv for a grip? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did uh, 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 some film work a little bit. Who were you working with on with that? Back in the day, we had this kick-ass crew. Uh, my friends over at Into the Void Films. Okay. K. R. Brooks is a fantastic cinematographer, and Nate Waters. He's gonna be the best director ever one day. He's nice. on his journey. There we go. Yeah, he's doing awesome too. I hope I hope they're all doing great. I haven't I haven't talked to them in a grip, but okay. you know, it's just life. It happens. Fun, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fun though. We had. A, a cool little ragtag group of people that was kind of a skeleton crew jumping around and doing a bunch of projects. I was very fortunate to get some time to hang out with them, so that was cool. Yeah, yeah, they were nice enough to bring me along. That I mean, awesome. yeah, that's 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 what it's all about. Like just crossing different paths, doing doing different things with different people. Hey, um, 
that's that's what it's about right yeah. like you see so many people driving uh how many customers do you usually come across in a shift do you think average you've been doing it for so long right so it, it varies day to day based on how long the trips are and stuff like that but like tonight i'll probably be doing 25 to 30 trips yeah so have you ever had a repeat customer i have really so it was kind of wild uh, it, it was at the airport so picked the guy up shout out what's up brett um, picked him up. He had, a, I think it was an Alabama like logo on his on his suitcase. So whatever. So picked him up. Had a good conversation on the way back. Literally one week later, same exact time. He had the same same flight and everything. I just happened to be at Midway. All huh. of a sudden, the name Brett popped up again, and I was just like, it couldn't be. And then like pulled up to the ramp and sure as shit, I saw the bag. I was like, son of a bitch. Like That's I awesome. didn't think this could ever happen. And then actually recently I, somebody was going to, uh, they were going to a comedy show. I'm trying to think which one it was. Um, but I dropped them off at the comedy show and then picked them up later. And they're like, Hey, remember us? And I was like, not really, but uh, they're like, you dropped us off here. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Oh shit, <laughs> that was like you three up hours the ago. You dropped off. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, the odds um, of that. Uh, yeah, was that like, all at the airport? So, the no, the the Brett one was at the airport, and then the the comedy show was just a, a couple kids around town, whatever. Going to see a comedy show. That's awesome. Can I try knocking out a few of these uh, bullet points real right, fast? Let's hear what you got. Cool, cool. So, uh, funniest parent story. Yeah. Um, it's my funniest memory looking back, but in the moment it was the scaredest I've ever been. I grew up in a farm in the middle of nowhere. Shout out Rock Falls. Shout out Tampico, Illinois. What's good? What's good? There we go. <laughs> um, but when I say out in the middle of nowhere, I mean complete and utterly in the middle of like farmland agriculture center. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, so my dad for a joke used to cut the power. Like he'd go downstairs and cut the breaker off and he'd come upstairs and he was acting like, uh, he would, he'd move around like Igor from, uh, like Frankenstein, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. kind of hunched but down yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, his big thing would uh, be tucking his teeth in between his, like under his lips and he'd go, I'm not your father, little boy. I'm not your daddy. And he'd say shit like that. And he'd chase us around the house and obviously scared shitless and like pretend to like, I'm going to go get your mom. And like, you know, he'd make like a, like a haunted house in our house. Yeah. yeah. And granted, I'm, I haven't done therapy, but I'm, I should probably bring it up if I do. Uh, so that was, that's my funniest that's, parent that's story. Good. That's good. Um, worst roommate story, roommate revenge. I had a, a roommate once upon a time that, uh, put a, a used, um, uh, uh, condom on inside of one of the other people in the house's uh, pillowcase. So that was probably the worst thing I've ever heard happening. That's pretty gross. It was pretty fucked up. So, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna topple on top of your dad's story. I oh, actually, you have a dad story? I, like, yeah. So I'm a dad. Oh, nice, nice. Congrats. So we have a piano that I got for my daughter. Uh, I think last year for her birthday, and I'll play the low notes. Like, I'll start, I'll just be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then, like, I'll get lower and lower, and, like, I'll kind of, like, drop down, like, have my eyes get, like, yeah. Undertaker oh, eyes, basically. No, you don't. And I do pretty much the same thing. Like, really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> That's so what I, I do. I, they're being torn. They love it, though. They they, they think it's hilarious. And, and they'll remember it, because it's, oh, it's yeah. like, okay, so I, I have this thing lately where we accidentally adopted a pregnant cat, so I had four, <laughs> been, I have four You kittens. were telling me about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've rehomed two of them, but I got two more to go. Okay. And so at one point... If, any, if anybody wants a cat... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. If, <laughs> if Tyler anybody up. Have, I got two to a good home. Um, anyways, though, I, I've been giving my cousin, he's got uh, two kids, and he's, you know, he's raised a, a six and an eight-year-old. How old... If you don't mind, if you uh, seven if you and seven and four and a half, seven and four and a half. Yep. So yeah, almost like right around the same ages that you have, right? With two humans, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's that's way more than than cats I can leave in a room all day. <laughs> but since technically I've raised six other life forms in my home, uh, you know what I mean? I give him shit. Yeah, I'm like, you don't get it, man. After <laughs> after you've had five and you get to six, it's just it's all downhill from there. You know what are you gonna do? And right. All the money it takes, and he just he gets so mad at me for <laughs> comparing that to him raising two children. Right, right. Click it or ticket. Click it or ticket. That's the law. Now, seatbelt saved my life once upon a time. Did so, it? Yeah. What happened? Um, 
the reason I came to Chicago was because I had enough money to do it. Okay. Uh, I think it was June 23rd, 2011, okay. somewhere around there. Uh, me and my it's about brother, the same time that I headed out this way, too. Uh, my younger brother, a friend of ours, uh, and myself all got in a car accident. We were going down a road we've been down like every day of our existence right yeah. and the person who was driving uh just didn't realize that it was a three-way stop and not a four-way stop you just got stuck at a four-way stop and took the turn too quick hit the brakes just right and we slammed head first into a tree uh, that did not move uh at all <laughs> um the car was so old that I think I think the joke was it was an Oldsmobile and the the car was so old that the Smobile fell off so it just said old. <laughs> this was also like a decade ago or so. Um, but we hit this tree right, and if we didn't hit this tree just perfectly, our day would have been so much worse. If we would have went left a little bit more, we would have shot on over to an overpass. We would have like Dukes of Hazard it oh, off of an overpass. Going the speed we were, we probably would have fucking went through a, a barbed wire fence or two and, oh, and into the highway. That's fucking wild. So scary, right? And then if we would have gone too far to the right, we would have uh, gone through this uh, sheet metal building and we would have hit a tractor, like this big ass combine or something. I, I don't remember that's exactly wild. which one. But yeah, we we perfectly. So Stop. thank God that tree was there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't say we perfectly stopped. My my little brother broke his femur, so it was pretty Ooh, heavy. Man. There was a helicopter involved, but this is another thing leading to my my. Uh, is that just because you lived out in the middle of nowhere, and that was the quickest way that they could, or was yeah, there some we were, serious serious oh, injuries? Oh, we we were driving into town. That's that's how rural it was. We were going to town. Okay, and uh, we were going to get Chinese food. It was like three p.m. And once again, it was just the. Music hitting just right, young kids yeah. driving back country roads, whatever, and somebody just forgot that what they thought was you just keep driving through this street, there was a stop sign, yeah. and it just came up real quick. Uh, actually, ironically, my buddy Nate that I was telling you about, um, he shot me a text right before it, like we hit, and I'm pretty sure that's why I also didn't realize in the front seat how much time we had until that stop sign was coming up. Yeah. And I looked down for a millisecond and it was like, hey, what are you up to? Nate, right? I could see the name and all that. Yeah. And then I looked up, there was Bark, and then just bam, the knockout. That's wild. Yeah, it was crazy as hell. Um, Viva Las Vegas, what's this one? Vegas Tales. Vegas Tales. Only been to Vegas once. I've been twice. Have you? One good experience with some shit that went wrong, and then one I had a good experience. I hung out with the co-host of the show. We did a did a trip out there. Ended up partying with a bunch of comedians. Sick. Um, yeah, that was a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, my Vegas experience, we went with uh, some bar crowd um, that the, the place we just stopped at, I had to go pick some stuff up. Yeah. Uh, can I do a shout out for absolutely, the Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. A uh, little spot, 6809 North Sheridan. It is called the Oasis Tavern. I recently got it tattooed on my leg. If found, return to Oasis, 6809 North Sheridan. That's where you take it. Uh, Chicago. And yeah, um, we took like maybe 11 or 12 people and we stayed at the Hooters. Uh, the Hooters Hotel, which okay. was... I didn't know that was a thing. It, it is a thing, and it's right across the street from, like, MGM. It's actually a decent deal. They give you a bunch of free wings throughout your day and, awesome. like, a couple happy hours <laughs> just for staying there. Yeah. Yeah, we had crushes on all of the Hooter elevator women uh, or people. Yeah, it was great. That's what they want you to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's we, what they're there they all had a, They all had a nickname every time we'd get in the elevator drunk so that was cool nice uh somebody offered me uh cocaine cocaña cocaña yeah uh in front of madame trousseau's and that was fun like i didn't do it and i didn't like buy it from him. i'm not a coke guy myself yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, but it was very interesting to you know be standing outside of a wax museum and somebody's <laughs> like here would you like drugs and, and then like, go what? and look at these wax statues on, and watch Vegas? them come to life <laughs> uh we did find a cool place though that i'm pretty sure was a, a front so i don't want to give the name in that sense okay. um, but it's a color and it is a traditional mythical being and i will give you those and you guys can work with it okay okay but uh this place was insane so there was like 
30 slot machines. They said they had karaoke. And since I host a karaoke at that bar that we were just at. Yeah, I'm definitely going to stop we, up there for that. Oh, yeah, night. swing out. It's a late night. We have a great crowd. After 2 a.m., all oh, the nice. bars close, so they come to us because we're open until 4. It's oh, fantastic. Oh, sweet, yeah. Um, but we had, uh, we had 10... 10 minutes to an hour, you know, it's, it's, we had time to kill, whatever, sure. you know, you could sit in there and do one drink or you could sit for the whole night for all they cared. They didn't know what the own prices for their own drinks were. <laughs> the, you <laughs> Was it like around, a barter system? Dude, it seemed like. <laughs> I'll give you $3. It, well, that's just it. It seemed like somebody in Vegas wanted a clubhouse. Like, 15 dudes who live in Vegas were like, we'll be the worst bar experience. <laughs> Everybody will know that this is where we go to get some sleep or to, like, fucking refuel on our own dime. But let's just own a bar. And it, trust me, it's not like a, a tourist little, like, hole in the wall. Yeah. It was just, like, a spot we saw when we were driving in from the airport. And we went there. They had like Japanese style karaoke where you would go into your own yeah. little booth and like, not not a fan of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teach I mean, their own. That's what we did. We thought it was like, hey, everybody, we got a list of forty people, and everybody's going to do a song one an hour or some bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, let me see what else we got. Mm -hmm. I definitely threw a, a hissy fit when I was a kid, uh, and I had like the first girlfriend breakup. Dude, get this. This is this is this is about as seventh seventh heaven as it gets. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I drove a dipshit of a vehicle. Shout out Pontiac Sunfire. All fiberglass. I paid $1,000 for it, and I'm pretty sure the sunroof never worked. Um, Was it just open all the time? Just like, like the crack up? No, okay. I never really used it because the guy who gave it to me was like, eh, I don't know if it works. Um, but, oh, just a dipshit of a car. Um, I bought it because it kind of, sort of, could pass as a Batmobile toy. Okay. And I was like, no, not not at all. It's the worst. But all my cousins had Pontiacs at the time. Yeah. Little did I know they had, like, Grand Prix. I was over here with the fucking Sunfire. I was rolling this with a, a, lot. Thank a, you very a much. 91 Ford Ranger. So that was shout-out to the Pope Mobile. That's there you we, go. That's what we call it. There you it. go. A uh, buddy of mine, Nate, from high school, they had a, I think it was a, a 90 Plymouth Voyager. And that car was bad as hell. That van, that van was sick. <laughs> Loved it. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I I went over to my ex's house to see if I could, like, catch her on her way inside and be like, can we talk? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the stupidest shit in the world. Because uh, we had nothing the to say. We already said it. We broke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Like, oh, I just happened to be on your street, even though you know I live 40 <laughs> minutes away. Or, like, some I bullshit. just happened to be in your cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so get this, right? Uh that's happening and i uh i'm sitting in my car and just dude listening to like fallout boy yeah. like sad b track fallout like, boy. like i was did, uh yes. i was quite the quite the catch um <laughs> anyways uh she showed up with a guy from like the wrestling team or oh, some no. shit like the jock and i was like oh what the fuck and they they walked up to her mom's fucking house you know what i mean like whatever and so to show that like i'm upset i fucking slammed on my gas and like tried to peel out but it's an it's a 2001 sunfire like <laughs> you, you're not peeling out in a sunfire so i basically just Slow kind of <laughs> i i slowly got to 60 and then i spun out a little bit to where it was more like oh my god did someone fall asleep behind that wheel it was terrible one of the funniest pranks i've seen go wrong uh, my buddy Nick in high school told me about this, and I can say it because he already got in trouble for it. Uh, <laughs> so they were driving around one night, and they got to this kid's house. And I'll leave this kid's name out of it, okay, but yeah, yeah. he knows it happened. Uh, uh, they, they, t my buddy Nick said, "Stop the car." Nick got out, small, little cul-de-sac area. Okay. Nick went up. This is before ring cams as well. You yeah, know what I mean, even yeah. even like Radio Shack security. Ring cameras. has just ruined any like neighborhood madness that we did as kids. I'll send you a, a good one I saw earlier. It was this dad going outside of his house, and this kid just stopped because he was getting ready to ding dong ditch him. And uh, so he goes to ring it, and he's like, "Can I help you?" And he's like, "Hey, funny story. Uh, I I was supposed to come ding dong ditch you, and if I don't do it, I have to walk home. So 
can I just pretend and like run away? And he's like, better yet, I'll chase you and yell. I won't hurt you, but like, you already just run, just run back to the car. The kid starts running. The dad's like, hey, you get the fuck over here, kid. Like, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. What a fun memory to give that kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I respect ring cam in that fashion, and I also yes. respect ring cam on like. Dude, sometimes, man, sometimes you see some weird shit on ring cams. Yeah. You see some weird shit. TikTok, I'm looking at you. <laughs> There's some weird shit. Like, when you get somebody who knocks on a door and they're like, hey, is Bob here? And it's like, excuse me, what? Yeah, just come down to the door. And it's like, no, no, I'm And good. they've got a gun. And they like, got some weird shit. Right, or, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, they got a bag on them or some fucking weird shit. Yeah. That's the one thing. I I know a lot of comedians have tackled it, but I, I just love the fact that I, I'm not kidnappable. Like, somebody won the big lottery, right? That, that, uh, how much was it? It was like a billion dollars. Uh, yeah, it was, it was yeah, that, like, but wait. someone from Illinois actually fucking won the yeah. lottery. You know what I'm saying? Can we go find them and become friends with them? Oh, dude. So I watched that show. Do we have a name um, yet? I, have you seen that show, I Won the Lottery? I, I seen it? feel like I've seen bits and pieces, but I've never sat so, down. So there was a there was a person who watched that show, okay? And I think it's, and folks at home, listen, this is important shit. Go back. Okay, whoever cuts this, you ready? This is this how we start. The preview. Guys, this is the most important shit you're going to hear when it comes to the lottery. I'm giving you this secret. All right. All right, and then we'll do whatever you got to do. So anyways, fucking dude goes and watched like season two, episode three, I think it is. He said it specifically. And somewhere along there, basically him and his wife figured out if they play $25 a week for six months, just to try it, okay? Just to try it. Same place, $25 a week. A week the, or? $25 a week in the Because lottery. there's two two per week. There is. So okay. if they did it fucking 15, 10, like I don't, I don't know exactly, yeah. but their increment was $25 a week is okay. what I hear, okay? Legend has it, it's 25 a week, okay? After six months, they had won like $30,000 in like the smaller things, okay. right? Just it's six, seven months. By the end of that year, that family had racked up 300k by st- just uh, continuously. Not yeah, not st- yeah, statistically and continuously. Because like I buy scratch offs, right? I used and to be a big, big scratch off. Were guy. you a scratch off guy? Uh, yeah. No shit. You remember the fi- uh, the 500 a week for life? Oh those yeah. Those were the ones. Those were my jam. Oh yeah. I, I won 500 twice on it. Did you? Yep. No shit. Yeah, that, that was pretty solid. Um. Yeah, my abuela used to give them to me in all my cards, like, all the time. So, like, ever since I was a kid, dude, I remember being on a a family road trip. We took the, uh, like, took a Winnebago road trip to uh, Colorado once, right? It was awesome. Went up to, it was scary as shit, don't get me wrong, taking an old 80s, possibly 60s Winnebago, (laughs) yeah. 53-foot camper. And, you know, that's back plugging in your Nintendo 64 into if somebody gave you an extension cord kind of thing. Right. Um, But I highly recommend if you get the chance, take your family while they like maybe like 10 to 15. Do that road trip thing, dude. Yeah. See if you can rent a a, a nice. They got them nice these days. Yeah. And, And get a state park pass. You can get that for like five bucks. I'm all about getting the little passes. Like I got AARP already. Nice. Because all you have to do is be over the 18. It's insane. And folks at yeah. home, if you're over 18 and you are a U.S. citizen, I think those are the only two requirements. You can get an AARP card, and there's mad discounts and shit you can go do throughout your city. Highly recommend it. Good to know. Every time anyone's ever asked me what's my most embarrassing moment, I've always re uh, uh, gone back to. A time when I was a child, kindergarten, and I pissed myself. Uh, but I pissed myself just on the worst day to do it in whatever my young brain thought was the big deal at that day. It could have been like a Christmas party or something, but something happened during that, like, later in the day. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, there would be a party after everything ended. I can't remember if it was, like, a Thanksgiving before break or some bullshit. Yeah. But we had a, a bathroom in the back of the classroom, and there was, like, four kids waiting, and I just, I, I opened the floodgates, and I just, <laughs> I wetted my little trousers. So that's that was my most that embarrassing moment back, as yeah. childhood. Uh, as an adult, I accidentally roofied myself. Um <laughs> And I'm not saying that I had it to give to other people, but I had some house guests that were staying with us. And have you ever heard of GHB? 
Uh, no, I've not. So it's it's basically like a date rape drug. Okay. Uh, but a lot of people in the military apparently do it because it's out of your system in like six hours. Okay. So they're not allowed to do stuff that'll be in your bloodstream. So if right. they have time off and they're going out, I think we take a left here. Okay. I was going to oh, yeah. keep going. So anyways, I had some friends up. in the military that came by, and I, I don't know if they'd put something in their own drink just because they wanted to have a fun New Year's Eve. Yeah. I ended up uh, just putting a bunch of moves on a person who – wasn't my wife uh the, it became my wife later in time but okay. it wasn't my night to, to put moves on a certain person um i ended up putting myself in a cab and had them send me to the oasis of all places uh and i got there i said i needed a glass of water and then i left my phone charger my keys and everything i woke up the next day nobody was home and I uh, apparently the guys who stayed with me thought since they didn't have keys to get back into the house since I left early, they punched out the glass window uh, for the door that leads into like the building. Yeah. They just shattered both of them because they were two giant ass Marines. <laughs> like I basically brought two unhinged Marines to Chicago <laughs> because they were leaving the next day. And I was like 24 and like, hey, I got a place. You guys, let's go. <laughs> let's go out New Year's Eve. Let's have a blast. I'm 24. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that wasn't the best idea. That's awesome. <laughs> but I was trying to be nice for a friend. Um, awesome. But yeah, so that was probably my most embarrassing moment. I had to wake up the first of a new... You want to start a new year. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Wanna, on the up and up. Start I'm going to do a diet. I'm going to do this and that. I woke up and immediately checked to see if any of us had warrants. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that nuts? That it's the fun, two <laughs> Marines that I was supposed to take care of are missing. I have no recollection of the night. There's broken glass everywhere, and I have my debit card, and, like, I don't have my ID. I don't have my phone charger. I had my phone, but I didn't have the battery. I didn't have the battery. And it Back turns when you out, could take the battery off. Yep, and the battery <laughs> was at the bar. Somebody tried to give me one of their rapid chargers, and they plugged my battery in, and I walked home not knowing that even happened. That's funny. Well, hey, thank you so hey, much for Tyler, the ride. Thanks for coming on again. We, yeah, yeah. We, we did. I, I think we mentioned it in the in the episode that we tried to record with you, but Mac fucked it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we were all very <laughs> intoxicated. I wasn't because I, I was. You were driving. driving. <laughs> you yes. I apologize for that. <laughs> Us too. You, guys, it, you guys though. <laughs> put it behind a paywall and get your sensor button ready. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> even after, I, I we'll keep that for the archives and yeah. Eventually, we'll, we know it happens. We'll filter but no one else needs to. <laughs> Absolutely. All, all right, right, Tyler. Well, thanks cool. for coming thank on. Thank you man. so much. Um, can I do a quick shout out to yeah, the dude, show? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Folks, you get a chance, check us out. Hi and Hello Podcast uh, on Spotify, on Apple, on uh, all that good shit. But I gotta get out because we are double parked. And where can where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Tyler Young773 or at Hi and Hello Podcast on Instagram. All right, guys, go check it out. Thanks for coming, Tyler. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks again for stopping in at the four-way stop. Just want to remind everybody that we are giving away free rides in exchange for hilarious stories. If you want to get on the four-way stop, just give us a call at 612-666-9626 and we'll be in touch. And also remember to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and all other platforms that you can find us. Thanks guys.